Good morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Sunday, August 27th. On the impact map, uh, the main trend will be some isolated to scattered showers across the eastern and northern portions of the Great Basin becoming uh, more scarce with time as drier air starts to push into the region. On Tuesday, along with that drier air, we'll have a cold front, and you can almost draw the cold front between the edge of this breezy dry area and this line of showers in the far north. And right between there will be a cold front. South of that, where most of the area is, it'll be warm, dry, and some breezy winds. Uh, just to the north of that area, however, showers and higher humidity across the high country of the central Idaho mountains. Now, a lot of lightning, again, in a lot of areas from Idaho down through much of Utah. We'll have to watch a lot of these areas as we get the warmer, drier and in some cases, breezier weather coming in early next week. A lot of this uh, shower and thunderstorm activity, though, was wet. You can see the precipitation coverage here in some heavy amounts in south-central Idaho. However, despite that, because the sagebrush is dormant and near or below 100%, which correlates with extreme fire behavior, once you get a couple of dry days, along with the cured grasses, uh, you do have the potential for new fires, and this one here was a little over 100 acres, otherwise just a few small starts elsewhere. Last seven days have been very wet ones for much of the Great Basin, especially southern Nevada, the central Idaho mountains, where they received anywhere from an inch and a half to as much as three or four inches of rainfall a much larger area of a half inch to an inch where you see the areas in the green and some donut holes in between. Given the nature of showers and thunderstorms, they hit 80% of an area, but they can miss 20%. Now, looking at the ERCs, though, most of them are, if not all, are below the 50th percentile, just a little exception here in northern Utah. Um, but a lot of the ERCs you have to keep in mind are based on thousand hour heavier fuels. If we look towards um, central Idaho here, you can see on the hundred hour fuels, they maximized about four days ago with the end of the rains and their hundred hour fuels, which just take about four days to respond, have dropped down significantly and are trending further down. And if this is the hundred hour fuels, then the 10 hour fuels are probably much closer to late August normals. And that gives us a chance of getting some fires in the grass and light brush sometimes. Uh, satellite imagery, well, it shows high pressure building in. The residual moisture across northern and eastern areas could produce isolated afternoon showers and thunderstorms, otherwise dry air moving in from west to east. You can see that dry air mass here in the Tannis shade um, under the dome of high pressure, which is building further north. So light overall winds, isolated showers or a wet thunderstorm in the far east. You can see the seven day pretty much all green except the far northwest and parts of the Snake River Plain. Humidity's driest in Nevada in the teens in most areas, 20s in Idaho, uh, upper teens to mid 20s in Utah. On the left, winds are light, so even if we do get an ignition, should be no major issues today. For tomorrow, dome of high pressure builds overhead. Again, heat builds, temperatures shoot up a couple degrees, winds overall light. You see a little bit more of yellow on the map in the western areas. Humidity, again, driest in those western areas, even drying out through much of the Snake River Plain in Utah. On the left, winds remaining very light, zero to five miles an hour in most areas. Now, things change on Tuesday. A strong cold front coming in. You see this trough of pressure. You see the tight packing of the tight lines that correlates well with strong winds in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And this area of green up here indicates where we could see some showers or thunderstorms right along the Salmon River and just south of it. But uh, once you get out of the central Idaho mountains, it'll be breezy and dry in this wind belt. So we're a little concerned there. You see a bit more yellow on the map. There are the strong winds. Now, the strongest winds, these purple shades, gusts of 35 to 40, those are going to be in areas where the humidity is near 30%. But it's the, once you get into the lower elevations of far southern Idaho, that's where the humidity is in the teens to low 20% range even drier humidities down in Nevada. So that's where our main concerns will be for any ignitions and maybe a bit of spread during those afternoon hours. Three-day precipitation totals, most of this will be in the next 24 to 36 hours. And just a, um, in the far northern and eastern areas, just some light amounts, otherwise dry across most areas. And that dry air mass overspreads the entire region on Wednesday. I see more yellow on our seven-day map. However, by Thursday, 
We have another cold front, this one with more moisture pro approaching far western Idaho late in the day. There could be some strong gusty winds and some residual low humidity just ahead of that front, but a wedge of dry air pushing into much of Nevada and northern Utah. At the same time, southeasterly flow starting to bring up more monsoonal moisture starting to approach the Arizona Strip or far southeast Utah late in the day. And then by Friday, that monsoonal moisture starts encroaching more into our southern areas. Cold front to the north bringing more showers to the western Snake River Plain and the uh, Payette National Forest. A lot more green up there and green down south here as well. Monsoon full force across most of the eastern two-thirds of Utah and cooler with higher humidity and unsettled weather and scattered showers across much of the um, central Idaho mountains area and maybe even down into the Oahis. So um, things remain benign. It's driest across Nevada. Um, Seven-day precipitation totals, a lot of this will be with that monsoonal surge and also some of the, the lighter showers returning back to Idaho. Now the 8 to 14 day outlook above normal temperatures, the, the center of it again across the central and southern plains where it has been. Uh, the eastern Great Basin will be on the edge of it. We also see drier conditions returning to our southern areas, basically north of the Highway 50 or I-80 corridor, and going up to Idaho is where we still see the chance for above normal precipitation. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.